operates will uh, have a chance to see a unique show in the sky tomorrow morning. An annular solar eclipse, better known as a ring of fire, will be visible for the western United States. Now the moon lines up precisely between Earth and the sun, so only the sun's outer rim uh, shows, and so that's the ring of fire that can be seen. So joining us now to discuss the solar eclipse is Noah Petro, lunar scientist from NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center in Maryland. Uh, Noah, thank you so much for joining us. Andre, thank you for having me on. Uh, no, I always like to find this out first. What does a lunar scientist do? Oh, I get to study everything about the moon. It's history, uh, how it's changed over four and a half billion years, and how the moon plays an important role in eclipses and solar eclipses for us to enjoy here on Earth. So the perfect person to talk to. Uh, let's start with this. Annu annular eclipse versus total solar, solar eclipse. Yep. Can you explain the difference between those two? Right, and you did a great job of, of sort of setting it up. For folks who have heard of the supermoon over the last several years, we're familiar with the idea that the distance from the Earth to the moon is not always the same. The image you're seeing there is from a total solar eclipse. But when the moon is a little bit further away from the Earth in its orbit, so I've got a representation of mm -hmm. the moon and the Earth, and so when the moon is a little bit further away from, it, from the Earth in its orbit, it doesn't quite completely cover up the entire sun, and so that's when you do get that ring of fire, that annulus of sun peeking through. We love to quote Johnny Cash, and so yes, a ring of fire eclipse is a wonderful thing. This song, next year, <laughs> this that next song is going to be playing a lot when we when we when we look at video of this this uh, coming uh, uh, annular eclipse here. Uh, how rare are these annual eclipses, uh, as you just showed in that demonstration? That's a great question. So so yeah, the the, the eclipses in general happen around the Earth. Uh, you know, once a year or so, but for them to happen in our backyard over North America, it doesn't happen what, but once maybe every decade or so. And, and, and so we're very fortunate that we had one in 2017. We'll have a total solar eclipse next year. And we do have this, this ring of fire, this annular eclipse happening tomorrow. But for them to be in our backyard is a pretty fortunate occurrence. Yeah, it's good. It's going to be moving over the very northern part of California where we are here. Uh, I think Modoc County. Uh, so we're not really going to see all of it here in the Bay Area, but I know you're all the way in Maryland. But but do you know what the experience will be for res residents here in the Bay Area since we're not going to see the full eclipse, the full Absolutely. annual eclipse here? Absolutely. I mean, it's still going to be spectacular. The, the, about 80 to 85 percent of the sun will be covered for you in the Bay Area. And so you'll still notice that, yeah, it's getting dark out and something funny is happening and the moon will cover a good portion of the sun. It will be this, this partial eclipse that you'll be treated to. Um, so it's still a spectacular sight um, and one worth celebrating. As you're showing here, there are, there are very uh, important safety tips yeah. that we have to take to be able to be eye safe during this eclipse. Yeah, and that's what um, we're gonna get to next here. Uh, yeah. Obviously, may seem obvious, do not stare into the sun, even though the moon is moving in front of it, it's still pretty bright. So, so tell us about the dangers of doing something like that. Yeah, again, even if the sun is covered, 80% of the sun is covered by the, the moon, that bright sunlight is still filtering through, is still coming through. You can still do significant damage to your eyes by looking at a partially eclipsed sun. Getting um, eye safe uh, solar viewing glasses is the the safest way to look at the sun it's the only way to look directly at the sun you put them on you can i cannot see the bright lights here in the studio these are not your average off the shelf sunglasses sunglasses will not cut it um, in your video there we're showing how do you create a pinhole projector you take a, a postcard any piece of paper punch a hole on it and project onto something else and you will see the full disc of the sun or the partially covered disc of the sun um, if you go to go.nasa.gov uh, go slash eclipse, um, from there you can find all sorts of other instructions on how to make your own pinhole projector yeah. and other eye safety tips. And, and, um, and the benefit is that you get to reuse these glasses if you take good care of them. Um, for next year's solar eclipse as well. I wish I wish I'd save mine here. And I just want to let people know that the safety code on those uh, should be IS0123. 012-2, uh, that has to have that number on it. Hopefully yours has that number. Oh, perfect, it's right there. Uh, so, you, so you know those are safe. And, and finally here, for those that can't see it, um, how is NASA gonna be streaming it here? Well, you know, we really love to lean into these events. These are global events. People from all across the world 
can share in this. And if we, you go to nasa.gov slash TV, the NASA TV will broadcast, uh, broadcast the eclipse. We'll have stations all across the path of totality walking through what's happening so that people can enjoy it. But, but absolutely take the moment to go outside and safely enjoy the eclipse uh, from your own backyard there in the Bay Area. Safety, the key term here. Uh, thank you so much, Noah, Noah Petro, the uh, lunar scientist from NASA's uh, Goddard Space Flight Center. Thank you for joining us this morning. We appreciate it.